guys, welcome back to my channel. I can't believe it. It's been about six months since I moved here to Shenzhen, China, and I honestly don't know where the time went. To this day, I remember very vividly arriving in Hong Kong and just being in this very intense culture shock. It wasn't as intense until we actually got to mainland China because Hong Kong is still a bit relatable with the heavy British influence. But when we crossed the border into mainland China, it was honestly the biggest culture shock I've ever experienced. And the thing is that I had been traveling for a long time before that to many different countries, but nothing was as different and as challenging. Even though it was really intense, it was not intense in the way that I expected it to be. And that's when I started to adapt and started to see different places and explore different neighborhoods, I was just amazed. When we first arrived here in early April, our first mission was just to get settled. How do we create some sort of daily routine, figure out where to go grocery shopping, where to live, how to get around. Our first hurdle, which we thought would be the hardest, was finding an apartment. Now, I don't know if it's just because we're really lenient people or really just don't have a lot of expectations. I mean, we're just out of college. It's not like we have much money, but we found an apartment very quickly and it's been great ever since. Everything after, which are little things you would think would be super easy, have been a bit difficult. I straight up found bugs in my pasta. I don't know if I should eat that or not because there's just bugs swirling around. That is absolutely disgusting. I have had an unlocked phone for a few years now. So any country I go to, I usually just go to a little kiosk and I buy a SIM card. It takes about 20 minutes and it just shoots it out and I can use it wherever I go. Here in China, it doesn't work like that. We don't speak any Chinese. Not speaking Chinese makes things difficult. So when we try to get a phone, it took us about five to six hours because we're just trying to explain to them what it is we want. The reason why it's such a big culture shock here is because there is a major language barrier and a cultural barrier. These cause a lot of issues, unfortunately. When we get over these issues or circumstances is kind of when we grow the most and when we start to feel happy yes we figured out how it works here yes we communicated with this person we got what we needed usually when i've traveled to countries and i don't speak the language it's not that big of a deal because we can do charades and we can use hand gestures and figure it out if i'm in another country and i'm trying to express like time i'll go like this and they'll understand but it's not the same here not even with counting we want two three four five six seven eight nine ten and this is how you count to 10. Here in China, they only use one hand. So it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What has been really helpful and the only way we've gotten around here is we've downloaded a translator app. And so this app, you can just type what you want to say. It works offline, so no internet, no data. And you can show them what it is you want to say. Or better yet, you're at a restaurant, a cafe, which happens quite frequently, that has no English translations. And so you can take a picture of the menu and then it'll translate. I have no idea what I just ordered, but it looks like a pretty good chicken noodle soup. Spicy chicken. Another part of life here is actually just getting around. The issue we have is Google Maps, Apple Maps, they don't work here. Even if you can get away with using them, nobody updates the map. And that's why it doesn't work. Because even if you are able to get access, it's likely not to have the location you're trying to find. On the plus side, that's actually part of what has kickstarted our adventure here, is having such a hard time getting around is kind of what has led us to discovering places and things and people that make being here in China worth it and make things so exciting. We're kind of lost trying to get off the roof of the mall, but we can't really. We're stuck up here forever. Oh, what an awful view. <laughs> that is the way that I discovered Baishi Zhou, which is an area that I really like. I really like it because it's more showing you a traditional side of China. To this day, that is where I do my grocery shopping. Not the easiest to do grocery shopping there, but it's a lot of fun. I even have like a pasta guy. I get fresh pasta for six kwai, which is not even a dollar. A lot of people, they travel because they want to be pushed out of their comfort zone. So coming to China definitely will give you that push that you want to be pushed out of your comfort zone because it's all uncomfortable. Unless you understand the culture and the language, it's uncomfortable. Now, that's one thing I am kind of upset with myself for is I've been here for six months 
and I have not learned the language. It's something that I want to work on and I think if anybody were to come here, like it's something you should put effort into just because that can only help you and help you understand, you know, why is why are things the way they are? Why is there cheese in my coffee? People are also really nice here. I would say that out of all the places I've been to, people are very understanding and very nice about the fact that you don't understand. I just want to say something truly amazing just happened. We were ordering milk teas and we found out we couldn't use our WeChat Pay to buy them. And this couple in front of us offered to pay for our drinks. We just WeChatted and paid them directly. That was really remarkable. And if this person ever watches this video, honestly, like you're amazing and that was awesome. One other thing is life here is slow and fast. So slow in the fact that people are very slow. I mean like walking on the streets or doing anything, people do it really slowly, really peacefully. Definitely if you're coming from a place like Europe where like anywhere you go you gotta be on a mission because you gotta catch that metro, you gotta catch that bus, you gotta go here and everybody's just walking fast like New York. But it's not like that here, at least not in Shenzhen, not in Beijing. Everything is really slow, peaceful, you go to parks, it's really quiet, which you're just like, how is this possible? Because I'm in a city that you would think is really loud. At the same time, it's very fast because things here just go up in seconds. Interesting. I will see a building from zero and then all of a sudden in a month or two I'm seeing like a hundred stories like things get built here so fast so that's why I'm saying on one hand life here is really slow but I think businesses and corporations and construction and everything is really fast life in China is an adventure it's a giant culture shock that will make you grow as a person at least it has for me but in a great way it has definitely made me stronger it has made me appreciate things more. It has made me more confident. It has made me more, I guess, lenient and not as uptight. I think that's all I have to say about life in China, how it is from a foreigner's perspective. I hope you enjoyed, took something away from it. If you have anything you wanna say, leave it in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.